Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Before we start on part two of ways God, ways God communicate with us, let's go to God in prayer. Lord Jesus, we humbly come before you. We confess we sin and come short of your glory. Please just forgive us of our sins. The sins we did normally as well as unknowingly. Whether we guilt of anger, bitterness, resentment, pride, unforgiveness, fear, free rejection, believing the lies of Satan, gambling, sexual morality, spiritual farming, cursing, cussing, oppressing, gossiping, gossiping, whatever sin we guilt of, please Jesus forgive us. Help us melt our flesh to cross, Lord God. Help us live a life pleasing to you, Lord God. Cleanse us with your blood, Lord Jesus. You said, Lord Jesus, we confess our sins. You're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we thank you, Jesus, for doing just that. Please, Jesus, continue to show us your grace and your mercy. We need you, Jesus. We want you, Jesus. We choose you, Jesus. Help us, Lord God. We welcome your Holy Spirit in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Now, allow your Holy Spirit to lead and guide us, Lord God. You said, Jesus, you are our shepherd. We are your sheep. We hear your voice. We follow your voice. We do not follow the voice of strangers, but flee from them, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for being our shepherd. Let us be your sheep and let us hear your voice and follow your voice and flee from the voice of strangers. Thank you, Jesus, for holding our feet to your path and then your light be a lamp to our feet and ordering our steps to your word. Thank you, Jesus, for helping us to obey your commands quickly, Lord God, because we are sent to your timetable, your timetable and calendar in Jesus' name. We bless you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> All right. So for part one, we talked a lot about and we studied the scripture looking at how God speaks through people. He appointed such as prophet and other men and women of God. God communicates uh, with us by dreams and visions. He also communicates through uh, with us through his holy Bible. And we're going to continue to uh, look at how God communicates uh, with us by dreams and visions and through his Holy Bible, as well as his Holy Spirit and how he speaks directly to us. We can hear him speak directly to us. We do have to be in a position where we have to hear, we, where we can hear him speak directly to us. So in other words, we have to know his voice so we can recognize when he's speaking. So we'll talk more about that later. So right now we're going to focus on how God communicates with us human beings by dreams and visions. In Joel chapter 2 verse 28 it states, and afterwards I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. God states this in his word and it is true. God said he will pour his spirit, his whole spirit on all people. And he said our sons and daughters will prophesy. So there's men uh, God that God has to prophesy and there are also women of God that God has to prophesy. He said uh, the old men will dream dreams and young men will see vision. So we have people that God will allow to see, have dreams and have vision and prophesy. It's true. So it's, it's some Christians don't want to accept this as true. Because they want to believe, no, since I don't have that experience of God operating with me in that way, uh, I believe that it's not true. It doesn't exist. No, God's word is true. This is what he said he's going to do. This is what he is doing. And we can hear testimonies from other Christians to see if that's the case. Job chapter 33, verses 14 through 18. For God does speak. Now one way, now another, though no one perceives it. In a dream and a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on people as they slumber in their beds, he may speak in their ears and terrify them with warnings to turn them from wrongdoings and keep them from pride to preserve them from the pit, their lives from perishing by the sword. Just like Job states here, how God will, will wait to, one of the ways God communicate with people is to wait when they sleep and he will whisper in their ear and give them warnings. Uh, he does. They have warned, God has done me personally, uh, uh, have done it for me, for things concerning me and my loved ones or, or things concerning people that he want, wanted me to pray for or our country or our leaders. 
He has done that. He has, uh, I've had visions and dreams. I've heard the whisper, I heard, I've heard God whisper in my ear. And another way I see it is like um, hearing it in my heart or my, or my mind. It's, it's, a, it's a still voice, um, a still audible voice that you can hear clearly. But it's, it's being spoken within me. I experienced that before. And I'm not the only Christian who have had those type of experience. But I do know there are some Christians who have not. Genesis chapter 20, verse 3. But God came to Ambimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. So here God came to Ambimelech in a dream at night and one gave him a warning and told him what he was doing wrong, what sin he was in, and, and what's going to happen if he could uh, continue on that path. Daniel chapter 2, verse 28. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mystery, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter, later days, your dreams and the vision of your head, of your head as you lay in bed are these. So then we got Daniel who's explaining it to King, the king, what his dream meant. But notice that Daniel said, God in heaven who reveals mystery. God revealed mysteries. To God gave this king warning about what was to forecome in his in a dream. He gave him warning, he gave him a dream and visions. Just like God operated then and gave people dreams and visions as a way to communicate, God still communicates with us in that way today. Now, some of us have so many distractions, so many other things going on, that it's hard for us to hear the shepherd's voice. It's hard for us to hear God's voice because there's so many distractions. Or uh, God speaking, and we can't distinguish God's voice from uh, other things, other voices. So that's why I say it's important for you to establish a close, intimate relationship with God when you know his voice and you can see and hear, understand what he's saying to you. And you can distinguish his voice from the voice of strangers, from the voice of the enemy, from your own voice. Genesis chapter 41, verse 25, then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. So here in Genesis, uh, you have <coughs> uh, God gave the pharaoh the king more than one this is a king who did not follow god god gave him more than one uh dream and each in the dream he gave him was revealing the same thing to the king god was letting the king know what he was getting ready to do god revealed mysteries to us in the dreams he give us in the vision he give us god give us warnings in these visions and these dreams. God tried to protect us. He'll put it, he'll give us warning because he's trying to protect us. God will let us know uh, something that is to come. And it doesn't have to necessarily be bad. It could be some good things that things he can really bless us with. I've experienced that. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abraham, I am your shield. Your war shall be very great. So this is an example here. God let Abram know in a vision. God sent Abram a vision. And in the vision, God revealed that he get ready to reward him. God still operates with us human beings in the same way today. He speaks to us in vision. He speaks to us in dreams. Now, you may be dealing with the sin of spiritual, spiritual defilement where your dreams and vision are being blocked. And if you're dealing with spiritual defilement, you got to confess and repent of your sin of spiritual defilement, and you have to cleanse yourself with the blood of Jesus. And this is the example of, I, I've dealt with spiritual defilement, sin of spiritual defilement, and this is what I do when I'm dealing with that. I said, Lord Jesus, <clears throat> please forgive me for the things I allow myself to see in here that I should not have. Because spiritual defilement means you, there's some sinful behavior you allow yourself to see are here or you were exposed to that you should not have. 
So you are defiled spiritually. So I said, Jesus, please forgive me, forgive me of my sins for allowing myself to see it here. Uh, for, please, Jesus, forgive me of my sins of for sins of allowing myself to see and hear things I should not have. Please, Jesus, forgive me of my sins of spiritual from me. Please cleanse me with your blood. I soak myself in the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. I soak myself in blood of Jesus over and over again. I cleanse myself with the blood of Jesus. I say blood of Jesus. The Bible scripture, I say blood of Jesus. Songs, just to cleanse myself, cleanse myself. I say Holy Ghost fire song where I cleanse myself. Like I said, I say something like Holy Ghost fire, come incubate my life in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire, come incubate my life in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire, burn up anything in me that is not of you. Because I'm asking God to burn up all evilness, all spiritual fire in me, to burn it up, to destroy it, to get rid of it. Because I want to be cleansed. So this Holy Spirit comes well, so I can hear him clearly. So I can hear what God's saying to me. So I can see and the, the dreams that he's given me. And he can bless me with the interpretation of it. So I can see and understand the visions that he's given me. So I cleanse myself with the blood of Jesus. And I allow the Holy Spirit to bring his Holy Ghost fire to cleanse me as well. And after I do that numerous times, I then I'm then at the position where I can receive uh, a vision and dreams from God again, and I can hear His voice clearly. Numbers chapter twelve verse six. He said, "Listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in vision. I speak to them in dreams." God states very clearly that this is His doing. He he said, when there is a prophet among you, God says, I am the one who revealed myself to them in visions. And I speak to them in dreams. God is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He still speaks to us human beings in dreams and visions. Daniel chapter 2, verse 19. Then the mystery was revealed to Daniel in the vision of the night. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Acts chapter 9, verse 10 to 12. Now there was a disciples of Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judah, look for a man of Tyrus <clears throat> named Saul, for behold, he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. So look at what God did at the same time. God gave Ananias a vision and uh, Saul a vision at the same time to let them know what he was getting ready to do. God still operates that way with us today. Thank you, Jesus. In Acts chapter 16, verses 9 and 10 states, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go on to Macedonia, concluded that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So God revealed to Paul where he wanted him to go next. God revealed things to us. That's why it's important for us to not uh, be spiritually defiled so we can able to hear what God is saying because it's for our own good. We want God to reveal things to us, to help us. We need all the help we can get in this walk in life. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to the Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. When we able to hear what God said to us, we will be protected from many harms. We will be able to avoid many pain and suffering because we're able to hear what God is saying. It's important that we allow ourselves to be open up to God, Holy Spirit, open up to God's voice, open up to receive the visions and dreams that God are giving us. It's to help us. It's another tool that God has given us on this earth to help us to make this race in Christ easier. Acts chapter 2, verse 17, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your men, your young men will see vision, your old men will dream dreams. It is true. It is true. We are living in the last days. 
God has poured out his spirit on all people. He has sons and daughters prophesizing. He has people who he has blessed to have dreams and visions to reveal things.